Hi, welcome to lecture number five. In lecture number five will focus on multiple alignments and some other advantages of uh, sequence alignments, mainly local alignments. So, as we know, we can perform alignment of sequences more than one sequence, but a pair of sequences is interesting to get some identification of exons, identification of some patterns that are common to two sequences of nucleotides or two sequences of proteins. But when we want to know if different proteins are related, different genes are related, or the same gene or same protein among different organisms are related, we must perform multiple alignments. So, many aligned sequence shout out loud some relations. And how can we perform that? What tells a multiple alignment? A multiple alignment starts with a um, fast format where you place the sequences of, for example, of protein, TBP protein. But you have to place them for the same protein. And analyzing, the, for example, the human protein TBP that have two isoforms with those orthologs. And you can use Clustal to perform this multiple alignment, defining the parameters. For example, the substitution matrix, the weight of gap penalty, or, um, both gap opening penalty and gap extension penalty. And you also may define, if you use the substitution matrix called PAM, percent or point accepted mutation, or the blossom matrix, bl a block substitution matrix, according to your objective. PAM you can use to follow up to phylogeny, or blossom that you can use to identify patterns, domains, active sites, some motifs. The way you perform the alignment and the substitution matrix are already based on amino acid uh, properties. So you, when you get the result, you have some symbols and identity when all the column of all the proteins aligned are exactly the same amino acid, they have the symbol of an asterisk. If they have two dots, you have amino acids that belong to the same group or have or share at least two properties, two physical chemical properties. If you have a single dot that indicates that the substituted amino acids just share one of the properties, so it, they're called semi-conservative. What can we use also a multiple alignment? Multiple alignment can show you some conserved um, repetition of a certain amino acid like glycine or proline that most of the times have a corresponding to a structure or a function. When you have um, amino acids hydrophobic with a spacing of two, non hydrophobic it suggests a beta strand that is the second um, secondary structure of a protein. Beta strand is represented by arrows. Otherwise, if you have a pattern 
with hydrophobic amino acids spacing with four non hydrophobic amino acids it shows like um, or it suggests an helix represented by an helix in the structure and it's a secondary structure so the way the amino acids show up in the sequence is corresponding to a protein structure and it may be represented and observed in 3D or just represented as a secondary structure for example TPP has several helixes 1, 2, 3 and 4 represented in blue and has beta strands that are represented by arrows like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 beta strands that in here in this secondary structure representation is made on green also we can analyze several proteins and identify certain amino acids and maybe one or two amino acids that are highly conserved in one certain position in all the amino acids or all the sequences of the, uh, that protein analyzed for example cysteine we have these two cysteines at position 32 and 35 that after folding the protein they share and they perform binding specific um, sulfur bindings that are very useful at the active site for the protein to perform its function And multiple alignment can identify even long distant proteins. For example, the globins. There is a huge group of globin proteins. And globins, if you think a bit, you know hemoglobin. Hemoglobin it's the protein that you have on your blood cells, red blood cells that are um, related to the function of transport of carbon dioxide and oxygen but you do have myoglobin that is present on muscles and even plants already had a leg hemoglobin and if we see it has only 50 percent of identity between those proteins but they do share a common active site that shows that although it's a very distant relation it does exist most of the times when you have proteins with less than 25 percent of identity you don't call them homologous so they're not exactly um, called as having a common ancestor having a divergent evolution but in this case although it has only 15 percent identity they're still homologous knowing from their structure and knowing from their evolution and in the alignment you can identify highly conserved amino acids and those that are more significant are histidines glutamates The multiple alignment can also introduce some errors because sometimes you uh, try to align sequences that are different proteins and they do align and if you check the, the identity it may be low but at that moment when you see the structure and you don't have a corresponding amino acid in certain positions and knowing for history about their function you know that they are not homologous so they are originated by convergency and they're called an analogs and not homologs so it's kind of tricky when you select your proteins or your genes to analyze you really need to focus on your problem 
So for example, if you want to compare different EGF epidermal growth factors, you really need to select the correct proteins. And the same proteins of different organisms. And then you may use different softwares or different approaches that use different algorithms. For example, the structure-based alignment, knowing exactly the biology of the protein, you can um, align and get the results of cysteine aligned in here, in here, here and here. It's all cysteines, all highly conserved. But when you use Clustal, that will be the software that you will use to, for multiple alignment. In this case, the Clustal W, that is the web-based, but you can install locally the Clustal X, Clustal X. The results are not exactly the same, although you can identify the main cysteines conserved. And also, hidden Markov models can identify even better the conserved amino acids between the sequences in analysis. It's quietly more common and more proximum to the structure alignment based. So most of the times the multiple alignment are very useful and you may use different platforms and different parameters and you get different results so you really need to test them out and how can you get those sequences ensuring that those proteins are homologous so to find distant relative homologous you can use a tool well and CBI has it, has it available on web called Basic Local Alignment Search Tool, BLAST tool. And at uh, protein level and local alignment of proteins called PBLAST, you have an option and an algorithm called PSI, Position Specific Iterated BLAST that from the first analysis of a basic protein blast uh, using the Blossom 62 defined by default you can get <clears throat> a list of proteins and then you can perform several iterations that using the results they construct a position specific scoring matrix in order to analyze and focus the new results based on the previous results. There are several BLAST um, tools. Protein BLAST, BLAST P, where you have amino acids and you search for a protein. BLAST X, where you have a nucleotide sequence and you need search for a protein in a protein database. You can choose the protein database, non-redundant or uniprot suite broad. These two are the most common used. TBLAST N, where you have the amino acid sequence and then it searches on a nucleotide database that is translated. And TBLAST X, that is the using a nucleotide sequence and then it goes to a search in a database of nucleotides, but translated. Psyblast is um, um, deriving from BLAST P, so it's protein against protein. And it allows you to find distant homologous sequences. Psyblast can be less and less sensitive and get closer to identify those homologous proteins that have very low identity. When you get below the 32% of identity, you get higher number 
of non-homologous proteins compared to the number of homologous proteins. Theoretically, below 25% of identity, you don't have homology between sequences, but as it's visible, and according to these studies, you have also sequences that are truly homologous with 10% identity. So you can choose them to perform multiple alignment and you will get results. Also, different algorithms and alignments and comparing sequences and analyzing sequences are using different algorithms or different models and hidden Markov models is commonly used to predict transmembrane um, domains and you can uh, obtain a result of the cell orientation if the protein is localized in the matrix or in the cell uh, cytoplasm or it's, ba it's basically located in membranes or is extracellular. Clustal is often used to multiple alignment and in the beginning it constructs the uh, similarity between the two sequences. It designs a guiding tree in order to perform the pairwise alignment and progressive pairwise alignment. So first it is identify the, the most closely related sequences that have a higher score and then it goes the first pair and then compares that pair with other sequences and progressively con constructs the all sequences alignment. There's handicaps because if you define wrongly the same the sum of the pairs then you will get all the results wrong so the parameters must be carefully defined most of the times you use the default and as far as you start knowing better the relation between the sequences you can adjust the substitution matrix and the parameters gap and gop so gap is gap extension or opening penalty and gap extension penalty. One of the examples that you will have in your exercise is uh, the Tata box binding protein alignment using the two paralogs, two isoforms of human TBP and then use some orthologs from mouse, rat, chicken, fruit fly and zebra fish. that will be performed on the class using Clustal. But you don't have only the Clustal software, you have several. And this tea coffee is uh, using not only global alignment as is used in the Clustal, that is based on global alignment and progressive pairwise alignment. Tea coffee joins together the usefulness of global and local alignment. So it um, starts doing pairwise, but the moment that it is identified the uh, um, best alignment, it um, extends the alignment using the um, local algorithm. And then this extended uh, alignment is progressively aligned the pairs with the other uh, sequences. T-Coffee has the advantages to solve some problems that Clustal doesn't solve and identify some um, slight alignments that Clustal may fail. Also, if you want to see some of the identical residues, whether they are nucleotides or they are amino acids, there's a graphical view of 
those multiple alignments that you can get from tea coffee from clustal or any other software of multiple alignments but then you get the i a l n file and then you can use web logo that is available on the web to perform the visualization the graphical presenting of the multiple alignment and the higher or the bigger the letters show up the more conserved or identical place of that certain nucleotide or amino acid so you have for example the web logo of your alignment where you can check there is a repeat of glutamines and then you have also methionine that is highly conserved between all sequences in different uh, positions and then you have here a gap that represents a lot of gaps although there is sequen there are sequences that may have the amino acid they're so less significant that they don't show up so web logo just highlights what is highly conserved and identical between the proteins aligned you have studies uh, nowadays not only with proteins but also with genomes that allows to identify some specific um, binding factors that may be common to several organisms and may be highly recognized for example in the, pro uh, in the project 1000 genomes was identified the CCCTGG sing finger um, motif. You know, you cannot forget that this shows the highly conserved the identity. In general, it's because common ancestors of sequences evolve through mutations and these multiple alignments can highlight the substitutions, insertions and deletions that occur during evolution, but it must be validated biologically by the analysis of fossils and other um, studies, not only in silico analysis help you to understand the relations between the organisms, so you must be careful. Thanks for your attention. We will continue uh, with lesson number six. Thanks for your attention once again. Bye now.